What's up guys, Perry from Rockville here, and today we're gonna show you how to set up your Battery Strip 24 wash light bar. As you can see, it comes with the light itself, two feet with the mounting hardware to attach them to the light, a wireless remote, and a power cable to charge our light. Now there's different ways we can place our Battery Strip 24 no matter the setup we're going for. A lot of these placements use the included feet, so let's go over how to attach them to the light. So we'll start with one of our feet here and the mounting hardware. We're gonna take this screw knob here and run it through the hole on our foot. Then we'll take the washer and feed it through the other end of the screw knob. Then we can take the foot and line it up to one of the holes here on the side of our light and screw it on to lock it in place. We're then gonna do the exact same thing with the other foot and hardware. So with the feet attached to the light, one of the placements we can use is a wall washing placement. Now there's two different ways we can wall wash. For the first way, we can just take our light and place it completely flush against our wall and make sure that the bulbs are facing up so that the light can shine completely upwards. For the second wall washing placement, we can take the light and place it a few inches away from our wall and use our feet to angle the light so that the light is hitting the wall the way we want. You can also use the same approaches to light up a DJ facade, but the one thing you want to keep in mind is the size of the facade. So the bigger the facade, the more lights you might need in order to get the fully illuminated effect. We can also use the feet to mount our light to a truss mount. So to do that, we're also going to need a couple of lighting clamps like our very own LC70s. We're first going to take out this bolt here on the bottom by removing the wing nut. Then we're going to loosen the bolt to take it out. And in case it's really stuck in there, you might need a wrench to make it loose. And then from there, we can unscrew the bolt to remove it. From there, you can take your bolt and run it through the hole here in the middle of your foot. Then you can take your clamp and screw it back onto the bolt. And then you can screw the wing nut back on to fully secure it. We're gonna wanna do the same exact thing on the other foot here. So now with both of our clamps attached to the light, we're gonna wanna loosen these butterfly screws here to open up the clamp. Then we can take our light and line it up to an open spot on our truss and tighten the butterfly screws to secure the light onto the truss. And because the light is rechargeable, we won't have to worry about running any power, but there is a battery life indicator to let us know when it's time to charge our light. So to do that, we can take the included power cable, plug the female end into the power in socket on our light, then plug the other end into a power outlet. There's also a power out on our light so we can electrically daisy chain our lights together so we can charge multiple lights at the same time. Once we have our light placed the way we want, we can use any of the available modes or colors that are best for our setup. Now underneath the display here, you'll see all the buttons to control our light. So we've got the menu button that will bring us to the different modes available. Then next to that, we have the up and down buttons to cycle between the different settings of each mode. And then we have the enter button to enter these modes and save our changes. So let's go through all the different modes right now. So first we have the DMX address mode where we can set our light to a different DMX address. And next to that we have the DMX channel mode where we can set up how much control we have over our lights with a DMX controller. We'll go over that more in just a bit. Next, we have the master slave mode where we can set our light either to a master light or slave light. And we actually have two different slave modes with slave mode one and slave mode two. Next, we have the sound mode where we can adjust two different features. So we can adjust the sensitivity of the microphone that picks up the sound. And we can adjust the automated program that the light cycles between in the sound mode. And we can go from zero to 99 with zero being the least sensitive and 99 being the most sensitive. Then we have the SO menu to switch the programs where we have 16 different programs to choose from. So for example, we just set the microphone sensitivity to 99 and the program to 16. And now if I start to clap, you'll see that the light is starting to change along with the sound being picked up. Next, we have the auto mode where we can cycle between 16 different preset chases. So we can press enter in this mode and use the up and down buttons to cycle between the different chases. And then we can press enter to select it. And don't be alarmed if it shuts off as it's setting itself into the mode. Next, we have the color menu where we can cycle between 15 different preset colors. So we can use the up and down buttons to cycle between the different colors. And then we can press enter to select the color. And again, don't be alarmed if the light turns off as it's being set to that color. Next, we have the manual mode where we can set our light to a customized color. So when we press enter in this mode, we can cycle between the red, green, blue, and white LEDs. Then we can select one of these colors by pressing the enter button and use the up and down buttons to set how much of that color we want coming out of the light. 
So for example, I'm gonna use the up and down buttons to cycle between the red, green, blue, and white LEDs. I'm gonna press enter to select the red LEDs and use the up and down buttons to set how much red I want to come out of the light. Then I'm gonna press enter to save it and then I can move on to the green, blue, or white LEDs and set how much of those colors I want to come out as well. And just like that, we have a fully customized color. Next, we have the display mode where we can invert the display in case our light is upside down, which is super useful if you're hanging your light from a truss. And then we have the version menu to find out about the software built into the light. Another way we can control our lights is with a DMX controller, which is great for live performances, stage productions, etc. So to set it up, I'm gonna need a DMX controller like this one here and a DMX cable. I'm gonna plug the male end into the DMX out on my controller. Then I'm gonna plug the other end into the DMX in on my light. For today, I'm just setting up one of my lights to my controller, but if you wanted to add another light in your chain, you're just gonna take another DMX cable and another light, plug the male end of your DMX cable into the DMX out on your first light, then plug the other end into the DMX in on the next light, and if you wanted to set up even more lights, you're just gonna repeat this process. The next thing we're gonna wanna do is set up the DMX channel mode and the DMX address on our lights. So on the battery strip 24, we actually have a few different options on how much control we have over our light through our controller. So for example, we have the six channel DMX mode, which gives us the most basic control over our light through our controller. And then we have the 58 channel mode, which is the most advanced setting that could be used with a more advanced DMX controller. We also have a nine channel mode, a 16 channel mode, and a 30 channel mode. So which mode you choose just really depends on how much control you wanna have over your light through your controller, or just the type of controller you have overall. So for today, I'm gonna use the nine channel mode because that's the type of control I wanna have over my light. So to set that, I'm gonna go to the menu button on my light and go over to the channel mode here. I'm gonna press enter so I can toggle between the different channel modes. And once I get to the nine channel mode, I'm gonna press enter to save the change. To set up the DMX address, I'm gonna press the menu button until I get to the address menu. Then I'm gonna press enter so I can cycle between the different addresses. For today, I'm gonna to be using A001, so I'm gonna press enter once I get to that setting. And remember, we're gonna to wanna to do this on the rest of our lights in our chain if we have more of them set up. So now I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my controller. I'm gonna go ahead and activate all of these scanners here on my controller. And now I'm able to use the controller with my light. So let's go ahead and see what each fader does in the nine channel mode. Now fader one is the master dimmer, which will set the overall brightness for our light. So for today, let's raise that all the way up. Fader two acts as the strobe mode, but we're not gonna see that until we set a color for our light. Then we can move on to fader three, which will control the red LED. So while I have the master dimmer all the way up, I can raise fader three, and then you'll see the red LEDs coming out. Fader four controls the green LEDs. Fader five controls the blue LEDs, and fader six controls the white LEDs. So what's really cool is that we can use faders three through four to make a fully customized color. So I have some white, a little bit of red, a lot of blue, tiny little bit of green, and there's my custom color. So while we have a custom color going, I can use fader two to set the strobe for the light. So I can raise it a little bit, then you'll see the light start to flash. And the more I raise this fader, the faster the strobe will go. Next, we have fader seven, which will set our light to a color chase mode. So if I raise it just a little bit, you'll see that it starts to cycle between the different colors. And the more I raise this fader, the faster the color chase. Next, we have fader eight, which is the most advanced fader in this setup because we can use it to set our light into the different preset modes, depending on where we have it set. Now where we set each fader could also be considered as the value for the fader. And when you move a fader on your controller, you'll see that the number on the top of your controller goes up, letting you know what value the fader is being set to. So with that said, I can raise fader eight to a specific value, which will activate a specific mode for the light. So now on my controller, I can press the page select button to access fader nine here. And now I can use fader nine to control the speed of this mode. So the higher I raise it, the faster it will go. 
Now, if you ever get confused on what each feeder does in any of the DMX modes, you can always refer to the DMX guide that comes included with the light. Now, here's another cool setup I want to show you guys. If you have a wireless DMX controller like the one we're using here, you can also get one of these wireless DMX receivers like the DMX WRE that we sell, which will turn your light into a wireless DMX light so we can have a completely wireless setup. So to set that up, I'm gonna go to the back of my controller and activate the wireless DMX feature with this switch here. And then after you do that, you'll see that this light flashes, letting us know the controller is sending out a wireless DMX signal. Now the wireless DMX signal is color coded, which is really important because this is how the controller will sync up to your lights or receivers. Basically, you want this wireless DMX signal color to match on your controller and your receiver. So to set that color on my controller, controller, I'm going to press this button here underneath the light. And as I'm pressing the button, you'll see that I'm cycling between all of the different colors available. So for today, let's set it to blue. I'm now going to want to do the same exact thing on my receiver, but first I'm going to need to turn it on with this button here, which is quite small. So I'm going to need a small item like a screwdriver to do this. You'll know that the receiver is on when the light on top here is lit. And then I'm going to use this button on the side here to switch the DMX signal color, which again, we want to set to blue. So I'm going to use my screwdriver here to set it to the blue color. And after that, the light on my receiver will flash green while the light on my controller flashes red, letting us know they're communicating and in sync. So now all I have to do is plug the receiver into my light, set the light to the DMX address and DMX channel I wanna use. And now if I play with my controller, you'll see that the light is interacting with the controller wirelessly. Now, if you wanted to set up more lights with this wireless setup, you can either get more wireless receivers or you can just get one receiver to plug into the first light of your chain while the rest of your lights are set up with DMX cables so you can still have a wireless connection between your controller and your lights. Now, if you wanted to have multiple lights set up but you didn't want to use a DMX controller to control them all, you can always use the master slave function. So to set that up, we first want to decide which light we want to use as our master light and which light we want to use as our slave light. For today, let's say that this light back here is the master light and this light right here will be the slave light. So to connect the two lights together, I'm going to take a DMX cable. I'm going to plug the male end into the DMX out on the master light. Then I'm going to plug the other end into the DMX in on the slave light. If you want to set up more lights in your chain, you're just going to take another DMX cable and plug it into the DMX out on your first slave light, then plug the other end into the DMX in on the next light, and so on and so forth all the way down your chain. So next on our master light, we're going to press the menu button until we get to the master slave mode. We're then going to press enter to enter the mode and then use the up and down buttons to switch it to the master setting. Then we're gonna press enter to save. Then we can go to our slave light and go to the master slave mode and use the up and down buttons to set it either to slave mode one or slave mode two. For today, we're gonna use slave mode one. Then we're gonna press enter to save it. So now we can go to our master light and go to any mode or color. And as soon as you set that mode or color on your master light, it will automatically follow on your slave light. You can also use the wireless remote to set your master light to a different mode or color. And again, the slave light will follow. So the other way we can control our light is with the wireless remote. Now, because the remote uses IR technology to control the light, you'll want to be sure that the light is in a line of sight distance. And you'll also want to be sure to point your remote directly at the light so that it changes. Now, if your light isn't reacting to your remote, you may need to go into the master slave mode and switch your light to the master mode so that the remote can work with the light. So if we take a look at the controller, you'll see we have a on and off switch and this will just turn on or off the bulbs of the light but it won't turn the light off altogether you're gonna want to use the on and off switch to do that we also got the up and down buttons to switch the settings of the different modes available on your light for example we can use the remote to set our light to the auto mode and then we can use the up and down buttons to set the speed for the mode so if I use the down button you'll see that the mode starts to slow down and if I use the up button you'll see that it speeds up. With the remote, we can also set the light to fade mode and use the up and down buttons to set the speed of the fade. We can also set our light to the strobe mode. We can use the sound mode to set our light to the different sound modes available and use the up and down buttons to set the sensitivity of the built-in mic. 
We also got the color mode to set our light to any of the colors available and use the up and down buttons to cycle between each color. We can use the master slave buttons to set our lights either to a master mode or one of the slave modes. We can also set our light to the base colors of red, green, blue, white, amber or ultraviolet. And then we have the additional colors like orange, cyan, or pink. We also got the full and shut buttons here. And then we can also set our lights to a specific DMX address or DMX channel and use the up and down buttons to toggle between the different DMX addresses or DMX channel modes. So hopefully this showed you guys how easy it is to set up your battery strip 24 wash light bar. But of course, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to reach out to our customer support team through phone or email. As always, I'm Perry from Rockville and we'll see you guys next time.